Okay, so dear Dhamma practitioners, be comfortable yourself and relax your body and keep your back straight, neck head straight in one line and your right palm on your left. So gently close your eyes and bring your attention to this bell sound. And while you're focusing to the sound, mentally relax your body, relax your mind and relax your breathing with your thoughts. So do nothing extra. Just follow the sound, please. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Homage to the blessed one, the exalted one, the fully enlightened one. So dear Dhamma practitioners, in this ongoing meditation sessions, we mainly try to give some basic information for yourself to work and develop a very clear, good spiritual foundation, especially practicing with meditation. So then always you have to remember when you practice, you should know what you practice and why you practice and how you practice. Don't just keep doing things without knowing the reasons or without knowing how you do it. It's not just keep close your eyes and it's not just you keep thinking about something because that is what we keep doing whole our life, thinking. So whatever good for us and whatever not good for us, that all come out through our own past experience. It, it is there, There's nothing new in you. The whatever that you experience, it's already there you experience out of your mental formations. So that's mean out of your own past experience. So then, Important thing is, we have to understand that this capacity of our thoughts or the mind or the experience is not enough for us to, to find the ultimate truth. Why? Because the ultimate truth is not somewhere you can gain as informations. It's already there within yourself. But the thing is, through this samsaric journey, we used to believe and we used to follow, we used to practice, we used to build up, we used to live with, we used to hold it to informations. So that informations now became your life. And then when the information become life, you always have to keep going with it. There is no end. But practicing meditation means here, in the very first level, you recognize how this life happening to you. So why how do you why you have to recognize it? Because the world itself means you are moment of experience. Your eye, ear, nose, tongue, body and mind. That is the world. An eye object, ear object, nose object, tongue object, body object, mind object. And at the same time, out of this both, when your eye and eye object contact together, 
the consciousness arise. So then your world means eye consciousness, ear consciousness, nose consciousness, tongue consciousness, body consciousness, and mind consciousness. There's nothing else. But how this eye consciousness or this, how this all the six consciousness arise? It arises out of the contacts. So when the contacts happens, it is very important in that very moment, the very condition of the this body and mind change the outcome, which we don't see, we don't recognize, we don't understand. I repeat it. So your world means your eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind, and the, the contact happen with the eye object, ear object, nose object, tongue object, body object, and mind object. So out of these contacts, consciousness arise. So in that very moment of the contact, the, the, the quality of contact going to change according to the condition of the, the consciousness or the condition of the moment, body and mind, both. And in that very moment, whatever that you gain as experience, is your world. So this mechanism, when you keep doing, when you become more familiar with this, when you become used to it, what happens? And sometimes it, it itself happens and then we, we go beyond the time. So that is where our imagination arises. And we depending from our past, we develop our imagination and the moment of experience go away. And now another thing is, when the moment of experience tangle with the emotions or the desire arise from inside you, you may hold it as you. Why? Because we believe this I, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind as I am. And form, feeling, perception, volition, recognition, this all happen inside us and I am. So then when the moment of experience come to you, you don't recognize the contacts and the, the very condition of the body and mind bring the outcome. You think, oh, there is an experience. Oh, I am the one who experiencing this. It is not you experience it. That experience arises because of the, the contacts. Because when there is no contacts, no experience. If the I not contact with the I object, there is no I consciousness going to arise. Here, if not contact with the ear object or the sound, there is no way that ear consciousness is going to arise. So this is understanding this itself is recognizing the very nature of your life. And that itself the dharma. Dharma is head to toes your whole body, this mechanism, body and mind. Just imagine if you have, if you don't have this body and mind, no dharma. So dharma means that what happened here within yourself. And at the same time, before the Buddha and there were many people went through many experiments to understand it. So then the Buddha understood to the highest and to the depth, to the maximum. And then gave the exactly very clear map regarding this body and mind mechanism. And once now, we don't need to spend so much time looking just by ourselves. Because 
it's already there what is happening. That is what another way we call the dharma. And it is not belong to any, any time period. So that's why whatever that during the Buddha's time and it is it, still valid for today also and it valid for tomorrow, it valid for any other time. And it is available for anybody. Why? Because the very mechanism of this body and mind is the same for all of us. And it has this welcome nature. If anybody look for truth, it all that that person always go towards the dharma. This what the what what is this real really happening within us? If anybody look for the the genuine truth. So then, when it come to this practice, you should understand this is not about kind of like a very religious based practice. This is not about a kind of like a very cultural based practice. So the meditation, when it comes to that the journey towards the truth, especially when it comes to vipassana, you are not become biased to any following or believing method. So then can you make your mind free when you come to practice? Because when you start to observe and recognize the very nature and the condition of the world, that means you, if you, the, the very condition of your mind or the, the foundation of your entrance or the practice, sometimes effect for what you recognize. Because when you have some ideas in your mind with this preconditioned mind, when you enter to practice, it is very difficult for you to see the truth because it always reflects or the bounce back whatever in your mind. So especially when it comes to meditation, you, you release everything from you rather than you finding something. You give up everything. You don't gain anything. You release everything. You detach everything from your mind, especially with your own experience or the with your own knowledge or the understanding of what you know as life. Because otherwise you can't get into very clear view to recognize the nature as it is. Most of time we go with the life and we think this is spiritual life means this uh, go with these actions and some kind of activities. But go towards the inward and go, go into inside and recognize the very nature of the mind is totally different. And for, when it comes to that, not doing anything is the, the one of the best action that you can do when you go inward, not doing anything. Can you do that? You sit for meditation and you allow everything to happen as it is. But your awareness is there. It is not a kind of like a, you bring another mental action because you have to neutralize all the actions. So why you have to do this? Once you neutralize that, current coming from inside you, when you allow everything to happen as it is, that is where you can see this senses, that internal and external senses and the contacts bring the, the moment of experience. So that, that's kind of like you start to recognize how your life happens. Your life, then you recognize that you see your life happen because of the, the contacts. And once you recognize how it happens, you are, you are capable to navigate it and uh, divert it or maybe stop 
that whatever happens there. And you can take many, many different, different actions to stop it. Or even sometimes just the recognition itself become the, the solution to stop this, all the contacts. And not only that, there is another thing that in the future that you are capable to not allow it to happen. That also very necessary when it comes to our deeper actions, our habitual patterns. It's, it's kind of like a physicians, kind of like a doctor, that how they analyze some disease. They recognize the reason and they stop it. And then not only that, and they take necessary actions not to happen in the future. So when it comes to the suffering, the same. So in the very first level, you have to recognize the very reason why, why this suffering come to us. It's come because of your own interference, because of your own will, because of your own desire, because of your own needs, because of your own choice. And that toy, from where that choice comes? It is not the moment of experience. When you have the wrong intention to overcome or overtake the, the nature or the environment or the life, believing just this is me, I am, and that is where everything goes wrong. Otherwise, whatever come to your eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind, that moment of experience, nothing wrong with anything. That moment of experience arises and it will go away itself. But the thing is, once you recognize, oh, this is good for me, this is bad for me. And what will happen to that experience? That experience itself not going to go away. So then from where this bad or the good idea come, come from our past experience. And or maybe sometimes neutral, we allowing things to happen itself. And most of time, our that neutral actions happen to us because of our deeper ignorance. We don't care, oh, allow it to happen itself. I don't, I don't mind. So like that. This all happened because of our past behavior, our deeper habits. So then what you can in day-to-day -day life? First, you have to remember deeply when you experience something to see the very nature or the condition of your mind. In which condition, in which nature you experience it. It's not the outcome. And sometimes just when you look into your mind, maybe you don't see that uh, deeper desire. The mostly, commonly, three, three behaviors, greed, hatred, and the delusion. It can come in different, different, different ways. And even it has a way that can appear like a kind of like a more generous way, like a greed can appear like a more generous way. Hatred can appear like a very kind of like a loving kindness. And the ignorance can appear like the, the wisdom. So can you tackle that? So when you are, it's not about somebody. This is the thing that you have to do. When your greed come like the, the, the generosity, how are you going to recognize it? Are you welcoming? Oh, I am so generous. Oh, my heart filled with so gener generosity. You're going to appreciate like that way? So then what will happen? You start to nourish because behind that, the greed. 
and the anger and loving kindness and the compassion and sometimes the anger can come like the love. How do you know that? Can you, can you see your own anger kind of like wearing the, the very beautiful, nice, fancy cloth like the love come through your actions? How you know when you have very kind of like a kind of like a compassion, empathy, how you know it is real compassion or it is deeper anger? And the ignorance, that is the worst thing. Look at the world. You know, day by day, day by day. And the science, technology, and the kind of like uh, the, the, the knowledge more become more higher than any other time. But look what we experience, what the bounce back, what the result we gain. So more than any other time, you have to remember the ignorance come wearing the, the wisdom cloth inside us not outside others. It is nothing to do with judging others. So it's, we, you know, we don't talk about others. It is about our own inner behavior. So can you, when, when kind of like a, you mesmerize like you are so wise, you are so intelligent, you know a lot of things, and can you see it's, it's that deeper ignorance behind. So that is where you need this practice. Because otherwise, most of the time, we, we mesmerize, we get lost on the surface level with the pace value and just do the head massage. So don't go with that. For you, not for others. Inside you. So that's why you have to work within yourself. You have, you have to practice and you have to have, do basic work yourself to get purified from this all that happening inside us. So that is where you have to see when, when, when the moment of experience comes, you have to see how this happens. From where this come? When whatever that you go through, question yourself and see. And then you will recognize there is a contact and at the same time, in that very moment, the very condition of your own mind. And bring this effect to you. So the truth is beautiful. So going this way make you more, more, more kind of like a slow down. And it always make you more comfortable and relax. And it make you kind of like a fearless. Remember that we never turn our back to ocean. Whoever go to the beach, they everybody, you know, look at the, the ocean. So same like when you start to see the truth, when you start to see this mechanism, when you start to recognize the causation or the cause and effect, causality, when you see, start to realize the pure dharma, when you start to uh, recognize through nature, when you experience the reality, you never turn your back to it. You more and more and ponder towards that. And you become more open and you become more flexible to go with it. So practicing meditation is something like that. 
So then little by little, little by little, bring that ability to yourself. Because when you have ability to go deeper into you, you will see this all, it's kind of like a memory that we carry within us. And not only that, we are, we are so conditioned ourselves with our own thoughts, feelings. There's nothing else. There's nothing else. The world go the same way, whatever the world used to be. And the people, they behave the way that whatever they used to be. So we are, the, we are inside this head, this lilliput inside that keep talking the condition, everything, ourselves. So once you see that, then everything going to be okay. But otherwise, what happened most of time in this day-to-day -day life, that we, we develop our mind with conditions. We develop a Disney, Disney land. So our life itself is the Disney land. You know, when you go to the Disney land, you buy a ticket and you go, Everything so beautiful, so nice, fancy, you know, it's mellow, kind of like a, so charming. You know, you it's it's okay. You buy a ticket and you go there and you with the children, you mesmerize with the, you know, a, a Mickey Mouse. But the thing is, when your own life within your own eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind, experience, when it becomes a Disneyland, it is a real problem for you. Remember that. What you experience within your own life is another Disneyland for you. It's an illusion. You, are, you condition everything. You think, oh, this is nice, this is beautiful, this is so good. That's all part of your own Disneyland. That's the thing. And then we try to make it for others. Oh, everything is kind of like, oh, you know, it's like this, oh, I'm like this. And finally, it's all Mickey Mouse. <laughs> yeah? so th 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 that's what you have to understand. And we don't say, look at this electricity, you know, this wiring, this everything around that everything go perfect. And, uh, but still, even though it's go through the wire, just imagine if the, if the switch is turned off, that you don't see the light, because if the light on, it's, it's the electricity keep burning, then the pressure going away. But if the light is not on, the switch it turn off, the wire, the electricity waiting to blow out. It's they are waiting like a sleeping snake waiting to bite. So you are waiting. And when the time comes, what happens? If in case if somebody touch it, it, you can't see it. It's nothing there. You can't see. You know, it's look like so good. But if somebody touch it, what will happen? That why? That person get shocked. So like that, hmm? with our eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind, that when things happen inside, things happen inside, It's nothing happened. It's kind of like everything on the floor. But the thing is, once you hold it, me, my, I am, there's a shock happen inside. There's a shock. It's keep happening, happening, happening. And then look at sometimes people get heart attack. High blood pressure. And somewhere, maybe this nerve system somewhere is blow out. From where this pressure comes? Because it's always there, it's always moving, you know. So how this pressure become more high? 
because nothing going from outside, it's all inside, it's well covered from this skin and well maintained through the veins. So how then the pressure itself is start to accelerate? So the very condition of your moment of experience, remember that. The very condition of moment of experience, the, the condition can kill you. If you condition your mind with something, in that condition, if you experience something with your eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind, it can kill you. It can give the more strong, heavy spark, blow out. And then at the same time, If you have ability or the wisdom to see the change, what happens, that current keep going, the spark, not become that strong. It's kind of like a, you connect the, the earth, neutral, this line to earth. So whatever the current go into it then it's not going to blow up. So like that, always remember yourself. We don't, sometimes we don't look into ourselves how we experience this soul. We always tangle with the actions and outside things. So practicing meditation gives you opportunity to see this. And the senses, sense object and the consciousness and the contacts. That's it. There's nothing else. There's nothing else. And then, and out of that, you build up pleasant, unpleasant, neutral. That all pleasant, unpleasant, neutral, you come with the preconditioned mind. So otherwise, when you bounce back from all the pleasant, unpleasant, neutral, and things happen itself and you will see how things come to be as they are and you gain the, the necessary understanding just by experience itself. And when it comes to the very real, true understanding or the experience, it is not a kind of something called pleasant, unpleasant or neutral. That all pleasant, unpleasant, neutral feelings arise in the conventional life. It's conditioned by your own mind. So that is why yourself, it is very important to see this moment by moment, moment by moment experience that what is happening to you. So then whatever the life, sometimes overall, sometimes we ask, how is your life? And then overall, you know, we say, oh, it is good. Oh, it is difficult. It's okay. So from where it come? When you say that, are you really so your life? You have no idea about it. So then always remember, it's nothing to do with good or bad or okay. Because when it comes to the moment of experience, you detach from all the comparisons. It's just a moment of experience. And only thing is you have the equanimity. So the equanimity is not a kind of like a condition come out of the comparison. So the equanimity is the very, very nature of your point of view and the, your, the, the balance of the consciousness. So the consciousness itself don't get disturbed out of the condition. So that is where we call equanimity. 
when the consciousness get the disturb we get disturbed out of the condition you always go to the comparison then you always depending from something then it is not you you always tangle with the the ideas thoughts methods and you try to become somebody or you try to do something so that itself kind of like you push towards forward or the future so that's why breathing itself in front of your nose and your upper lip area give the solutions to this race so then rather than jumping dreaming hoping about something with your comparison just settle down with the equanimity so whatever happen let everything to happen as it is don't interfere with anything but you experience for ex to experience anything you no need uh, any effort like just imagine the sound come in this very moment so you hear it so you see it now it, it, there is no any e extra effort to see no it happened to you so and the smell the same taste the same feeling the same but the thing is this, when it happens in the middle of this all sometimes our intention our desire keep push us towards something so then that natural process break down disturb but how, how can you allow this everything to happen and at the same time you neutralize that in the middle of this all the current and release from this an experience just happen once you start to do this little by little little by little little by little you recognize we do lot of unnecessary activities we do lot of unnecessary bodily verbally mentally actions unnecessary and when the day you recognize that you are half enlightened you are half liberate and at the same time once you recognize how you can prevent from your unnecessary action in the future you are completely liberate you are completely enlightened so that all can you you can do just by seeing deeper 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 inside you and bring the clarity to yourself so with that let's get into practice a little bit now so your right palm on your left and neck head straight in one line and be comfortable with your posture so bring your attention to your body and scan head to toes yourself and say so patteva o oh, me i be well and happy three times take a moment and think we gathered here in this moment to practice this ancient meditation technique all the buddhas all the enlightened masters followed this path and achieved to wisdom so we also gathered here to accumulate that knowledge in this moment with this sitting may my body become more comfortable may my breath be more smooth may no difficulties come to me may all the success come to me also think for a moment this is the last moment we spending in this very lifetime and detach your mind from all your past memories and as well as any kind of future thoughts just try to remain in the present moment observing the sensation of your inhalation and exhalation so bring attention to your body please 
and observe your posture. We cultivate loving kindness and compassion in our heart and radiate it as a light through entire your compound, village, city, state, country, world, around this universe, also as far as you can through galaxies, other planets, stars, reminding yourself like this. With clear intention, mentally repeat after me. May all living beings in this universe be well and happy. May everyone be happy and safe. And may their hearts be filled with joy. May all living beings live in security and in peace. Beings who are frail or strong, tall or short, big or small, visible or not visible, near or far away. already born or yet to be born. May all of them dwell in perfect tranquility. Let no one do harm to anyone. Let no one put the life of anyone in danger. Let no one out of anger or ill will wish anyone any harm. Expand the loving kindness and compassion beginning from your heart. Forward. Visualize yourself and send it as a light. your backside, to your left side, into your right side. Downward. and upward. To all six directions at once, like the moon, the sun, spread the light, spread the energy, without any condition, without any limitation, without any resistance or without any judgment. Let your heart to shine with the loving kindness and compassion from the bottom of it with the maximum effort to the highest. Wishing yourself, may all living beings in this universe be well and happy.
Say sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. So first of all, we offer this practice to the great qualities of the Buddha, Dhamma and the Sangha. Also by the power of this meritorious deed, may all of us attain to the supreme bliss of Nibbana. May all your guardian angels and deities will receive these merits and increase their longevity and protect all of you from any kind of planetary influences or any ill effects. Ittavata cha mihi sampadam punya sampadam sabbe deva numudan tu sabba sampati siddhya sabbe bhuta numudan tu sabba sampati siddhya sabbe satta numudan tu sabba sampati siddhya imaya dhamma nudhamma patipatiya buddham pujemi dhammam pujemi sangham pujemi Adaya Himaya Patipatiya Jati Jarabya Dimaranam Ha Paribundi Sami Idami Punya Kamanga Savakaya Vahango to Sabadukka Pamunchatu. Bless you.